Greetings again from the Seam Russell Museum. Executive Director Tom Figarelli here, and welcome to another installment of the 2020 Art in Action Artist Showcase. As you know, the COVID-19 constraints that we've all been faced with does not allow us to have a in-person Art in Action event. And what you're gonna miss out on with that is not being able to see the artists produce their work in front of you. And also you'll miss out on the interactions and the dialogue that occurs with the artists at this great event. So in an effort to try to accommodate um, that and have a little bit of dialogue and interaction with these great artists, we're hosting these artist showcases. Um, we're joined today uh, by artist Tom Dean. Tom, thanks for being here. Thanks, Thomas. I appreciate you and the museum and everybody asking me to uh, showcase the art in action with you guys. Well, absolutely. No, we're excited. Tom, how's life treating you these days? Not too bad. You know, I think we're all in the same boat you know, with the whole uh, virus thing and everything that's going on. Um, and I think we're all just kind of surviving and doing the best we can. And specifically for me, um, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't been too bad. It really hasn't. Um, you know, our kids are going to college next week. So uh, um, life will be uh, an empty nester, if you, if you will, next <laughs> week for the first time. But no, things are going pretty good. Well, well, good. I mean, as you noted, taking it one day at a time, probably the, yep. the best uh, formula that any of us can adopt, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Tom, you're no stranger to art in action. Um, you're no stranger nope. to engaging with your collectors and uh, with people during Western Art Week. But why art in action? I mean, when you think of a quick draw or quick finish, what attracts you to that style of event? You know, a couple, a couple things, Tom, on, on art in action. Um, a number of years ago, um, this this will be my 12th year being accepted into the Russell. Wow. Yeah. So I'm very blessed and honored about that. Uh, but I think it was around six years ago that I clicked on or I checked the check or the box to say, would you like to participate in Art in Action? Um, and the first year was a complete blast. Um, I had never been in that kind of experience before. And uh, it was such a great feeling um in, on many different levels number one with the medium that i use uh, which is exotic woods um you know my my pieces kind of get lost in the in the process if you will they just see the end piece so it's real fun for me to educate people on the number of different types of exotic woods um where they come from in the world um, those are questions uh, all these years i've been in art and action um, number one questions of how you do that. Where do you buy it? Um, and it's fun for me as an artist uh, to, to educate people about um, the trees around the world. And uh, that, was, that was a great, great fun thing to do. And the second thing is, is uh, I think you kind of know my personality, which is, you know, it's, it's fun to be a little goofy and a little entertaining. You know, all these people don't dress up for the show to be, you know, bored. Um, so I think it was last year, um, I had a duck carving and uh, got around and went with the duck carving around and um, um, actually people started to laugh and it was, it was a great time. And uh, it, it also, I think, increased the price of the piece, which obviously is a, is a greater donation towards the museum. Well, that's, that's right. the whole, that's the whole purpose. Well, Tom, we appreciate that. And I think anybody who spent a little bit of time around you can, really um, get a sense of the fact you're, you're comfortable in your own skin. You've got a story to tell and you allow, as you noted here, your medium to tell a story too. I mean, right. that you work with exotic woods. I mean, it gives you a little bit of real estate all your own as an artist and, and to showcase that to your patrons and to your collectors. Yeah. That, that's something that people want to know. Um, so no, that, those makes for natural conversation points. They do. And um you know, I get, Tom, I get asked all the time, where do you buy your woods? Um, where do you get your driftwood? Which I always laugh at because they're not driftwood. It's like juniper branches or manzanita branches. Um, and, uh, um, you know, I can tell them, you know, how many hours, how many days, how many months. Um, and it's, it's, it's wonderful, that interaction. And that's, that's the, one of the beautiful things about the Russell show is uh, um, just the... Uh, the ability to connect with collectors and patrons that come from all over the country and introduce yourself and make them aware of your artwork through the museum and art in action and and uh, the Russell and the first strike um, so thank you yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun I look well, forward to doing it 
as long as you'll take me. <laughs> well, good. Well, we're going to keep coming back to the well then. Uh, you there know, you go. Because you noted there, there's this community aspect to what we do, just not with art in action, but with the entire complement of um, the Russell Exhibition and Sale, as well as the other events that have traditionally occurred around Art Week. Um, you know, because people love to have that conversation. They love to see what artists are working on um, yep. over one year to the next. It's that kind of annual check-in homecoming dynamic, which is- It is, which You're is exactly special. right. So on that note, you know, uh, let's say I'm, I'm coming up to you at, it's at auction 2020 and I'm gonna say, Tom, what are you working on? Um, what piece has your focus right now? Um, well, I have it here in front of me in two parts. Um, here's, I'm just gonna give you a little, little introduction here. This is, I'm doing a duck decoy for art and action. Perfect. So this is how they start. It's just a big, huge block of wood. Um, and you, you shape out the beak. Um, you got all these lines in the back of where I'm going to cut. I don't know if you see that. I sure can, but yeah. But the, the end piece, I finished the head, and it's a beautiful head uh, for a duck. Wow, but that's quite the transformation. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Um, this is coca bola wood, and this white piece on the wood uh, is part of it, and it's called the sap wood. And what the sap wood is is the outer portion of the tree. Um, so anyway, I have roughed out the actual body. So here's the body. Wow. So there's going to be a tremendous amount of detail with the wings, um, these feathers in the back. So a lot of this will get cut out. Um, and uh, then what I'll do, Tom, is I'll take the bottom of this and drill a quarter inch hole in it with a drill. And then I'll drill a quarter inch hole in that as well. And I'll put that and I'll glue that with epoxy. So then this is how the duck will, will sit. Wow, that's you fantastic, that? Tom. Yeah. That wood is just gorgeous and, and it shows the, the duck so well. I mean, just where you have the natural grain of the wood, it, it, it's almost like it wants a wing on the side of it. It does. Yeah, I mean, you can see the elongated grains of the wood on this. Oh, yeah. But what, you know, so, so you get a duck. Um, I've always been that, that wood carver that's, you know, okay, so you got a duck, you got a fish. Big deal. Um, <laughs> now you got to kind of put it into an environment. Yeah. So what I'll do with this, Tom, is I'll, uh, I have a piece of coca bola wood specifically for this piece. And it'll be, and people have seen it, but I'll put it as if it's swimming in water. So I'll carve the waves from the breast of the duck as he's swimming or she is swimming through the water, which gives it a more realistic mm -hmm. uh, look. So it just sure. kind of adds a little to the piece for you. That's excellent. That's excellent. Thank you. You know, Tom, you mentioned coca bola wood. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes. Do you have- Some a people call it coco pus, but you did well. <laughs> okay, well, perfect. <laughs> well, now that's probably what I'll call it. There we go. Do you have a go-to wood? I mean, do you have one that you prefer I to do. work with? Okay, which would that I be? I do, and primarily it is coca bola wood. Oh, it, okay. And, uh, yep, uh, and there's, there's many reasons why. Um, number one, it's, uh, it's incredibly dense wood, um, and it's a very, very oily wood, so, uh, once a piece is complete, Tom, I'll put a, uh, a finish of virgin tongue oil on it and then wipe all that off. But really, I'll buff it with a, uh, with a buffer. This is actually it right here. And I just apply pressure to the wood and it sucks that oil out and it just leaves it, it leaves it like it's, it's got a real fine finish on it. Oh, so um, the coca bola tree is a, uh, grows in South America, Southern South America. It also grows in Mexico, in Southern Mexico. And there's two different types you can tell, from one's from South America and one's from Mexico. South American coca bola tree is real orange, which is, which is this color. Um, a Mexican coca bola tree, which grows faster than the South American counterpart, um, is more of a dark brown and, and dark purples. Um, mm. But uh, I've been, you know, I've been buying it now from a supplier out of Southern California, um, Carlsbad, California. And uh, I've got a great relationship with them. Um, the one thing about coca bola wood, um, or all the rosewoods, because that's part of the rosewood family, like Brazilian rosewood. Okay. 
is uh, a number of years ago, all those trees were put on uh, the CITES list. And what the CITES list is a flora and fauna list uh, from a world standpoint of protecting specific flora, i.e. trees. Mm -hmm. And the South Americans have done a really poor job at reforestation um, of these trees. So when the CITES Act was enacted, um, there was no more importing coca wood into the U.S. So, you know what that means, the price went from here straight up. Oh, sure, sure. And so the price of, uh, of a log for me um, is, is very expensive. So, you know, I've used tiger wood, um, I'll use king's, king's wood, um, uh, many different types, wengi wood, bubinga, um, but over the years I've, I've come to find and, uh, and like the coca bola wood the best. Well, you know, I love the fact that you can then allow your collector or the public who's appreciating your art to then appreciate the wood. And if they're appreciating the wood, right. they're appreciating the, the tree, the forest. I mean, there's kind of this more holistic approach to that because, you know, quite candidly, since your medium is so unique, I don't know that people get that kind of exposure all the time. So, you know, not only yeah, do you feature that, then you're, you're this you know, expert of it too, that you can tell its story. And I think that's important as well. That's, that's a great, I mean, all artists tell a story. I mean, we all tell a story with whatever, whatever subject matter we're doing. Um, painters, sculptors, bronze people, wood carvers. Um, and it's, it, it was always been important for me to kind of elevate um, wood carving, if you will, to a new level of fine art. Um, because let's face it, a little wood guy, the crafter, <laughs> is kind of low on the totem pole. And I didn't mind that, being the underdog. And um, so I really have tried to elevate uh, the beauty of wood and, and what it really has to offer when it comes to an art form. And uh, it's been a fun process to do that. Well, uh, you know, excuse the pun here, Tom, but you've carved out for yourself uh, a unique place in Western art as a result of your medium. So I think anybody can appreciate that who's been to our auction over the past dozen years and is very familiar with your work. So uh, well, thank we, you. We, we appreciate you. You know, final question here, Tom, I think something that, you know, folks are always interested by, I think you've kind of touched upon it here, but just on a very conceptual level, how do you take yes. an idea? How do you take a notion or an inspiration and translate that into an end product? What's that process look like for you? Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, I get asked that a lot, Tom, and uh, really it's basically what I, envision um, with let's say waterfowl um, you know I've duck hunted and waterfowl hunted since I was a little kid I love to do it so I have all these childhood and adult memories of walking out at freeze out lake west of here and, and the muskrat mound and, and I can see those those big mallards coming off and they're flapping their wings or um, coming out of cattails or you know even with pheasants you know you know, you run them to the end of the fence line and they take off at the end and all sorts of explosions come. So when I have an idea, um, I, I really kind of have that in my mind. So like, like for example, this, the head of this duck is, is going to be a duck that is sitting, that is just resting on the water. You know, if you have one that is taking off, you know, the neck's going to be elongated and, um, then I just try to put that idea um, into whatever form I, I, I thought of. And um, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. I mean, sometimes it's just, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And <laughs> sure. uh, one thing leads to another and an idea comes up and you see a picture of you know, something on, online about waterfowl or fish or, or pheasants or bison or anything like that. And uh, you know, as, as a creative person to begin with, you kind of, kind of process that thing through. You know, it's no different than painters that, you know, have an experience up in, in the Bob Marshall and, you know, with the horses and the, and all that stuff and the beautiful scenery and, and it's trying to really give the viewer what they've experienced. And that, that's kind of how the process goes for me. No, I, th I think that makes sense. I, mean, I appreciate that, Tom. You know, I, I'd say that that's really consistent as we've, you know, showcased a few artists and they talk about, 
um, you know, the anatomy of a horse. I mean, they're right. very familiar with exactly. a horse. They've ridden horses. They've bred horses. Yep. They've broken horses. I would say that you've just painted a, a similar analog for ducks, right? I mean, as right. you know, an avid outdoorsman here, and you know, anybody that's been to Freeze Out Lake can attest that that's probably ground zero for seeing, you know, waterfowl. Oh, so I, you know, no, I can appreciate that, and I think you translate that incredibly, incredibly yeah. well into your art. Well, thank you. You know, and fish got me to the party, Tom. Um, I still love fish. Um, but like I said earlier, you know, so you got a fish. Now you, what do you, <laughs> how do you, how do you make that real to the viewer? Um, you know, and I don't paint. I don't want to paint, not going to paint. Um, so I really let the, the, the wood speak for itself. And, um, you know, over the years, I've done a lot of fish where they're coming up under a log and they're going for like a dragonfly. That's what I've done a lot of. Um, so every every person has has uh, kind of been in that moment of time, if you will, and has experienced that. So I think that's where the relationship kind of comes from. Well, no, I I think that makes good sense, Tom. It's very evident in your work for sure. Thank you very much. Well, Tom, thank you for your friendship to the Seam Russell Museum, for your long term support to Art in Action, to the Russell Exhibition and Sale. Um, you've got a lot of fans uh, amongst our museum community. And uh, we just appreciate you and appreciate your time in this artist showcase. Well, you're very welcome, Tom. And I'd like to end with this. Um, you know, the COVID-19 thing and this Zoom thing has created a whole different new platform for all of us. Um, and, um, you know, with the, uh, the news that, that all the funds were gonna come back to the artist was a really, really incredible gesture upon the museum and the board. And I mean that very sincerely. Um, so what my wife Patty and I would like to do, um, when, when my waterfowl decoy goes up, at the hammer price, we'd like to give 20% 20, 20 back of the sale price to the museum. Oh, because gosh. you guys have gone through a hard time too, and it's just called paying it forward, doing the right thing. So, you know, tell your viewers that 20% of this, uh, this waterfowl decoy will go back to the museum in good hands. So, well, Tom, I appreciate, we, Patty and I really appreciate that. That is too kind uh, of you and Patty. Uh, oh, no. You know, that our decision to, to have the proceeds benefit the arts, easy one. Um, you know, we're all in this together. We're one big art community. Um, so it made good sense to us. And gosh, we, we really do appreciate that gesture. That, You're that very welcome. Deal. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, you bet, Jen. Well, thank you, uh, everyone, for watching this artist showcase. Uh, we want to thank DA Davidson Companies, who is our gracious sponsor of Art in Action and underwrites all of our education programs at the CM Russell Museum, helping us advance the art and soul of the American West. We also want to thank Holman Aviation, who is the sponsor of Tom Dean for Art in Action, and Holman Aviation support benefits the CM Russell Museum. We want to thank and recognize them for their long-term support of, of our museum. And thank you all for watching us, and stay tuned for the next edition of the Artist Showcase. Thanks again, Tom. You bet. Thank you, Tom. Take Thank care. you. Bye-bye.